congratulations on the win. Thank you. Um, talk us through the armbar. When did you know it was there? Did you think you were going to get it? Talk us through the finish. Yeah, so I went for like that little Uchimata takedown with that overhook and um, I realized like I wasn't going to get the takedown um, and she knew I wanted to take her down. Uh, so I figured might as well kind of throw like a little bit of a Hail Mary armbar. So I just decided right then to step over. Um, and then for a second she kind of came up and like, so I switched to that triangle, but uh, ultimately, it was like that arm bar that got the tap, so. I'm sure you've heard by now, but someone put $37,000 on you uh, to win. Dude, I saw, so I saw that like, probably like 45 minutes before my fight, and like, I was like, that's so crazy to me. Like, I mean, I don't know who did it, but that's a lot of money to bet on like, and someone making their UFC debut, but congrats to them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> in a weird way, does that put more pressure on you, right? Something um, you know that you're about to cost someone their life savings. Not really, no. I mean, I mean, I saw it and I was like, what the? But, I mean, it didn't put any pressure on me because I'm like, that's your choice. Like, I have no, like, I'm not responsible for fulfilling that. But, I mean, it is cool to see, like, people putting that kind of faith in me, in a way, I guess. Um, but really crazy, for sure. It was mentioned on the broadcast. You're a big Ronda Rousey fan, right? She's your, the inspiration for you to get into the sport. Yeah, that's I. Yeah, that's why I started fighting for sure. So, I'm, I'm, have you seen the fact she tweeted about you? Uh, Megan just showed me. So I've been getting stitched up this whole time. So I haven't got to like even look at my phone yet. Um, but she did tell me about the tweet, and that's that's awesome. You know, like veterans supporting like young guns. Um, you know, it's all a cycle, and like there's gonna be little girls like under me one day, and like I think it's great that like you know, we support each other in that way, so it's cool. You mentioned being a young gun. In a, in a weird way, I feel like being so young almost puts a, a target on your back, right? Because yeah. you're going in there against these more experienced women who are going to think, oh, they're trying to make a name off me. Yeah. Do you feel that? Um, I mean, if I'm being honest, like, I kind of had that target on me with Invicta too, because I was, always, I was like also the youngest fighter to fight and win with Invicta for a while. Um, I, and like, it's kind of been something I've carried with me since I was like 18, you know, since I started fighting. So for me, it's no different. Um, you know, I, I feel like I'm where I belong, you know, and it's just about like getting better. It's about perform like improving myself as an athlete, as a fighter. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying, I'm just not going to pay attention to like targets that might be on my back. Cause like either way, there's going to be people that want you to fail or want you to succeed. So I'm just going to try to focus on me and have you know, me and my team like do what's best for me. Cool. Congrats. Thank you. Okay, uh, I was curious just what exactly was it that really drew you to Ronda Rousey? I heard that it was the Bech Korea fight, but was there something particular in that fight that really gave you the inspiration? Um, I don't know if it was in that fight particular, but I just remember I've never really heard a woman like speak so commanding, if that makes sense. Um, you know, growing up, like I had a lot of women in my life, but like, and like I saw a lot of women on TV, but like she was kind of like what other women weren't. You know, and I was like, oh, like, you don't have to be, like, the cookie cutter, like, mold of a woman, you know? So when I saw it, I was like, dang, like, because it's funny, like, I've told this story so many times, but, like, I used to go to, like, UFC, like, fight nights with, like, my family, and I hated it. When I was, like, seven or eight, I was like, this is so dumb. Like, fighting is dumb. Like, and then when I, like, saw Rondo when I was, like, 15, I was like, oh, like, girls can do this, too. And, like, something about it just, just stuck with me, and here I am now. <laughs> You got a win over a former Invicta champion. Yeah. What does that mean to you as you build on this career to have that type of win under your belt? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome, you know. Um, like I said, like, she's very experienced, and a lot of girls are compared to me. You know, I am young. Um, but, like, for me, like, I try not to think about, like, how, like, how many accomplishments my opponent has or, like, you know, I'm trying to worry about myself and, like, how I stack up against them and, like, what I need to do to beat them. So um, I think it's a great name to add to my resume, but I'm ready to, to go on to the next one and, and get a bigger name and, you know, focus on me and just do me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so she was coming up to straw weight. Yeah. How was she in terms of her power? Because I think that was the big question is, uh, yeah. is Kay just going to overpower her? I mean, I didn't feel much of a difference from a lot of the other straw weights I fought. Um, you know, I think, like, Jin, she struggled a couple times to make 105 too. And, um, you know, I, I didn't feel much of a difference. I think she's going to be great in the straw weight division in the UFC as well. Um, I think... Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't feel much of a difference size-wise, for sure. I thought I was going to, I'm not going to lie. Like, I thought, okay, she's coming up, you know, like, um, I might have a size advantage. And, like, maybe I was a little stronger, but I didn't, like I said, it's been just like most of the other strawweights I fought, with the exception of, like, a couple, but. 
Yeah. Everyone's been talking about, oh, you know, this fight came together quick. Yeah. <laughs> Were you expecting it to get the UFC call, or were you completely said, hey, when Invicta comes back, that's where I'm going to be? Yeah, so, man, like, I got the call Sunday afternoon, and um, I was literally taking my little sisters to Starbucks. Like, I was in the drive through line, and I get, like, the DM from McMaynard, and I'm like, whoa. And then, like, 10 minutes later, he calls me. And I was like, and then he like not only offered me the bout, but he offered me the the contract, you know, with the UFC. And I was like, I can't turn this down. Like this is all I've ever wanted. This is the call that fighters wait for, you know. So like, I was I was caught off guard, but at the same time, I was like, fully excited and ready to take up take him up on the opportunity. Final one for me. You're yeah. 20 years old in yeah. Las Vegas. How yeah. does someone celebrate the UFC debut? I don't know. I'm not much of a, like a partier in general. So like. I usually just go back to my room and like get pizza and, or something because like, I mean, like you said, I'm only 20. Even if like I'll be 21 in August and like not much is going to change after that either. I just like, you know, I kind of like to just unwind after a fight because a lot goes on <laughs> before a fight and during a fight. So what toppings? Um, I'm not picky. <laughs> Thank you. So does your order change in Starbucks once you find out you have a fight coming well, up? Well, it's funny. I wasn't. I wasn't getting anything. My sisters. They've been quarantined this whole time. Like they don't go out of the house. So like they're just like, can you take me somewhere to do something? You know. So I'm like driving them through the Starbucks line. Like uh, I didn't get anything, but like I was thinking about it, and then I got the DM, and I was like, okay, well <laughs> maybe I shouldn't. Um, but. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you made your debut. Uh, yeah. You're coming in here, and I think a lot of times there could be a lot of nerves, but you're coming yeah. into an empty arena. Yeah. Did that help things, and what was it like fighting um, in that environment? I feel like it's a little more awkward, honestly. Like, I'm used to, like, you know, some kind of noise. Like, I heard, like, uh, Biz being a couple times. Like, I heard John Anik a couple times. And, like, you can really hear both corners, like, really loud and vividly, too. So, I mean, for me, like I said, once I get in the cage, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Um, you know, no crowd, crowd. Like, it, it doesn't bother me. It was a little weird, like, walking out because, like, you know, there's no one, like, cheering or anything. But, like, I mean, it's still the experience I'm looking for. And it's the debut I wanted. So it's awesome. And finally, we see you come out on the crutches. Is that just soreness? Is there? Yeah, I can walk on it, but there's a little bit of swelling, so it hurts to put a little bit of pressure on it. It's just my shin from from the kicks, um, but I think it's just like an, an easy heel, so it just hurts a little bit at the moment. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Um, was there even a training camp for this? Were you training? Um, so our jiu-jitsu gym just reopened um, with like reservation-only classes. So we were doing like small style classes, but like I for sure didn't have a camp for this. You know, like I was only really doing jiu-jitsu, and like even during quarantine, there was a few weeks where like I would roll a couple times, but things were crazy. You know, so like um, things were kind of up in the air. So like I was eating really well. And I was like doing like those at home workouts, you know, you see like scrolling through Instagram, but like I, I didn't for sure didn't have a fight camp. So like I'm excited to like, you know, for my next fight, hopefully get like a fight camp in. But like I'm also like my whole career, I've kind of like taken these short notice fights, you know, like six days, nine days. Like that's kind of what I make my name off of, at least what I used to make my name off of is with Invicta. Like I'm always ready when, to get the call. So. It's not my first time not having like a full fight camp, but I was training like jujitsu at least. And um, how long are you gonna keep wearing the gloves? Uh, I just they made <laughs> they made me put them back on for a photo shoot. That's oh. the only reason why I have them on. <laughs> I had them off. They trust look good. Me. They look good. <laughs> Thank you.